name is Nick, last name Eshragi, E-S-H-R-A-G-H-I. And what's your title here again? I'm a doctor. I'm one of the burn surgeons at the Oregon Burn Center here at Legacy Emanuel Hospital. Can you start by just saying, um, how, how's Bethany doing? She's doing reasonably well, considering the circumstances of uh, what I hear has been her injury. She has uh, a uh, mixture of uh, uh, second degree and perhaps somewhat deeper burns on her face. Um, uh, fortunately, her eyes are scared, uh, but uh, she has a facial burn and she's at on her burn unit recovering from this. What percentage of, of her face is actually burned? Um, I would say the majority of her face. The only area that's spared is uh, the, uh, the eyelids area where uh, she uh, had apparently sunglasses on when this occurred, so her eyes were burned. Are we thinking she'll suffer scarring from this, permanent scarring? Well, uh, the, that, that's the, the difficulty of predicting. The, the, some areas do appear somewhat on the deeper side, uh, where uh, perhaps uh, uh, she would be at risk of uh, developing scars in those areas. So what um, kind of treatment is she receiving? Currently we're trying to just protect her uh, face from uh, drying out and also keeping her face from getting infected. So that's with topical uh, application of antibiotic ointments on her face right now. Um, the, uh, the care of the burns, uh, if it's a very deep burn, uh, that skin unfortunately is uh, going to require to be removed and replaced. If it's a, a second degree burn that's not very deep, then it could heal. Uh, it's the depth of the injury uh, in the under layer of the skin called the dermis that determines whether that skin is going to heal or is going to have scarring. So she has a mixture of burns, some areas do look deep to me. Uh, we'll just have to um, watch and wait and see how things uh, develop. Does your treatment depend, I mean, on what substance it was? Do you know what it was? Have you been able to determine what it um, was? The, what I, the, the original thinking was this could have been an alkali or a base, but uh, in fact I wanted to do a test on the substance. We don't have the substance. Uh, but uh, we, uh, my staff was able to test a little bit of that liquid on her clothing, and there's a uh, measurement called pH that allows you to check the acidity versus the uh, alkali nature of a fluid. And by the report I got, the pH of this substance was one, which makes it a highly uh, strong acid. Do you have any idea about the volume of liquid that was on her? Splashed on her face. Uh, the difficulty is, I only can tell you based on what I see. It must have been enough volume that it splattered on her entire face. Uh, it uh, 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 the and it's the the, the, the facial area only. It uh, didn't uh, uh, injure obviously anything on her neck uh, or her hairline or on her uh, uh, chest area where clothing perhaps was protected. A Get substance of this kind, I mean, would it be found in some kind of dishwashing detergent? Or like, where would someone find a, a pH level of one? Well, these are acids, you know. A acids are what the pH level is. So the, the uh, concentrated acid would have that low of a pH. Uh, we don't really have household liquids that are that low. Uh, but uh, essentially, uh, sulfuric acid, hydrochloric acid, phosphoric acid, any of these uh, uh, acids that one potentially could buy commercially, I'm not sure exactly from where, but uh, uh, one could buy something along those lines that could have this sort of a pH. The, the most common acids in our households are very dilute uh, acetic acid, which is vinegar, and uh, lemon juice, which is uh, citric acid. So, uh, but they, their pHs are much higher than this. What about like battery acid? Would battery acid have this? Certainly, that could do it. Yeah. Is it is this, is battery acid? Is that uh, sulfuric or hydrochloric? Honestly, I'm not. Yeah, you know, now you're uh, stomping. <laughs> okay. Me. Yeah. I, I thought I was <laughs> you're not answering you guys' questions. <laughs> you uh, what kind of water mention do you? Um, I think it's sulfuric acid, if I remember correctly, and uh, that that certainly could be a uh, concentrated. Enough. Do you see her as a candidate for plastic surgery in the future, or how do you see I, this going? I, in fact, am contemplating doing something today for her, yes. Uh, they, uh, we're, uh, 
planning on doing a, a, a derm abrasion in the operating room today to try to gently lift off the obviously uh, dead tissue and uh, evaluate what's going on underneath all this. So um, that's, uh, that's, I guess you would consider that plastic surgery, uh, that's burn surgery in my mind. And then it depends on what I find and how she heals would be the, the need for skin grafting in the future. And then once someone has a skin graft or a scar on a visible area, the reconstructive portion of that comes in the, the distant future where we would go and try to make the scar look better or remove the scar. Do you see, how long do you see her being here the, in the hospital? Um, the, her burn is a small burn uh, in my world. Um, she needs just protection on her face. Uh, if this was elsewhere on her body, I probably would have been able to let her go home today, let her heal for a while, and then come back and deal with the, the deeper areas. Because it's such an important area on her face, I'm actually uh, going to try to do something different than the traditional approach to wound care, to try to minimize the scarring. So she'll be here for a few more days as a consequence of my decision to proceed with this surgical uh, procedure for her. What was, done, she, yeah, what was done immediately when she, when she came in that night? Uh, what, what was they, done to uh, alleviate the, uh, the, the, the... The routine of any chemical injury is uh, a very long uh, time of washing with water in the hopes of trying to wash out the offending agent. Of course, we remove the clothing that could be soaked with this, and then we try to wash the face with uh, uh, saline or water, trying to dilute the agent. Because it was first thought it could be a base or an alkali, those are, are always the harder ones to do. And I, I asked, I had her uh, complete one hour of irrigation of her face, just to try to dilute the, the, the the offending agent out. Uh, unfortunately, in these situations, an antidote could be more pain, uh, harmful than not. So dilution and removing the substance is usually what we do, not trying to put some other agent. And obviously, we don't know what the substance is, and it's hard to predict these things. So she had a very long irrigation and then her face was uh, covered with uh, antibiotic uh, ointment to protect the surface. And uh, we are, uh, that's what the treatment, of course, pain control. Uh, burn injuries are very painful, and uh, patients require a liberal amount of pain medications to be able to uh, tolerate the, the injury. She's still on quite a bit of pain medication. She's doing okay, considering. Uh, she is, uh, she has the ability to require, uh, and to request and get whatever she needs for pain medicine as long as uh, uh, she's tolerating the medication. Dr. Dr. Shorty, right now. I just want to show a couple of the reporters what she looks like now that might okay. influence the questions they have for you. Very, very small one. Yes, that's uh, very common uh, for uh, an individual who has a burn injury. One of the most common things that happens is the, the tissue underneath the skin. And in fact, with big burns, it can be the entire body swells up. So uh, a swelling is very common that occurs with burn injury. It takes about 24, 48, and eight hours okay. for that swelling to settle down and go away. So um, that, that's common. And how common are these type of injuries? Do you see you? We see occasionally uh, some chemical burns. Industrial accidents? Yes, they are. Uh, but uh, what, uh, I will use this opportunity to educate the public, if any of this gets to them is that uh, a lot of the chemicals that could injure all of us sits right underneath our kitchen sinks. So there's a lot of chemical products that we have that are caustic to our skin. So make sure you know what you buy and make sure you handle them properly. So for instance, a very simple Drano that we all buy is a, one of the most powerful alkali and it's very bad for the skin and it can cause a full thickness and third degree burn within minutes of exposure. Cement is an alkali. People don't realize it, but they get exposed to cement for a while, they don't even know it, and then half an hour later they have a third degree burn. Uh, people use a variety of uh, acids for you know, deck cleaners. Uh, anything that is strong enough 
to cause a cleaning of some surface probably shouldn't be on one's skin, and especially one has to keep children away from these substances. So we see, in, unfortunately, kids that get exposed inadvertently to chemical substances. We see uh, adults who are using it improperly and they're not paying attention, so it gets under clothing. We see that people get splattered with these agents, and of course people on their, their job site sometimes get exposed to these. Uh, there's a variety of chemicals out there, so acid, bases, organic substances, uh, they all have different patterns, but they all could cause a significant skin injury. So in our burn unit at the Oregon Burn Center, we treat anybody who's referred to us with a chemical burn because it's the skin that's injured, and that's what we do. How fortunate is it that it did not come in contact with their eyes? Oh, extremely. This is uh, the, probably the, the most precious uh, amount of real estate one has on their surface is the cornea, which is that clear area right in front of the lens in our eye. Nothing is more precious on the surface than that. Uh, that would have been a very bad injury. Uh, chemical burns to the eye, especially to the cornea, can cause significant scarring and cause difficulty with permanent vision loss or whatnot. Uh, so it's extremely fortunate. I was quite relieved when I heard her eyes were spared, whatever this may be, and her uh, glasses had protected her, her eyes. How are Bethany's spirits right now? Well, um, uh, she's quite anxious. Uh, she, uh, of course, is very scared and doesn't know what the future holds for this. Uh, I, I think we've been somewhat reassuring to her of explaining what's going on and what we are going to do to try to help her out. Uh, but uh, she is uh, anxious and uh, at times tearful and uh, worried about uh, what this all means for her future. How long of a procedure are we talking about this afternoon? Probably about an hour to an hour and a half. Uh, sort of a careful, slow process of, I don't want to go damage any tissue. What I'm trying to do is I'm trying to remove what is obviously not alive and leave everything that's living and alive behind. How so, is it for you and other doctors emotionally when you're dealing with a case like this? I know you try to heal everybody the best you can, yeah. but here's a woman who did absolutely nothing wrong. Does that change the way you approach things at all? Uh, I, I'd like to say that I approach caring about every one of my patients regardless of their circumstance because that's what I do. I'm a physician. I care for anybody. Uh, obviously, when you have a young person with a significant burn injury like this, I feel for my patients the same as any individual would. So it affects me. Actually, it's been on my mind ever since I met her, and I, that's why here a day later I've talked to three other surgeons, come up with a plan that's a little different from our tradition here, trying to do what I can do to get her the best results possible. Um, burn injuries are always uh, difficult for patients, their families, and everyone. Um, we, we do this day in and day out, so we're a bit more able to handle some of the emotional burden that goes with this. Um, I feel for her. Uh, fortunately, I think this is fixable. We can fix things. Uh, we've dealt with much worse than this, and uh, that's where the unit, uh, the unit staff at the burn center with their experience and us physicians who do this uh, are comfortable managing this sort of an injury. So. Did any of the, excuse me, did any of the acid get inside of her mouth? Uh, fortunately anything? not. Uh, the, the inside of her mouth is fine. Her lips are injured, but uh, the, uh, that actually is also a very bad problem if someone's, uh, uh, especially in the lungs, windpipe, or the esophagus gets injured with these, they can be significant. But right now it's just an external, external injury. It's just the uh, surface of yeah. her face. Will this be her second surgery then? Did she have one before this? Uh, in, in our center, no. She's had no surgery so far. This, this is her first, one. first uh, real uh, invasive procedure she'll have to uh, for us to uh, deal with. First of many, or do we know? It all depends on what I find. Uh, you know, the surface looks bad. It, uh, it all depends on how deep that surface that's injured uh, is bad. So, and there is no uh, absolute 100% uh, way of checking how deep the burn is. 
Are you still deciding whether to perform surgery? This no, afternoon? I have you her permission to proceed, okay. and I'm doing that this afternoon. Okay, we should let, speaking of surgery, we should let Dr. Ashragi go.